Welcome back everybody to another Ranger video. And for those that are patiently waiting for some more caravan and camper trailer modification videos, they will be coming shortly. Trust me, I just need to get this out of my system. Now this is a video that was supposed to be part of the original tray modification video. I stripped it all out because I actually had too much time in making this false floor in here and I didn't think it would be all that interesting. But I've had a lot of people asking about the rack systems we've got on here, why we went that way, and a few other little questions that I thought, well, I'll put all that into its own little video, which you'll see here. So in this video, we'll talk through the crossbars that we've got both on the tray and up on the roof and why we went that path all the other options that you got in regards to tub racking, storage, and all that sort of gear, as well as a few handy tips and tricks for storage inside the tub that I've collected from a number of the Ranger groups. So that will be running through some of these larger storage items. We've got these really cool collapsible crates that work extremely well in the back of the Ranger, and a few other little tips and tricks that will help you out along the way. So come along as we show you how. So if you're new to the ute world like we are, there's a number of different combinations you can do to improve the storage of these huge, great big cavernous areas of the tubs themselves, as well as everything up and over. So I thought this would be a good video to actually assemble using bits and pieces of what I've got and a few other little things that I've thought of along the way since I filmed the original video. So while I've tried to park the Ranger back in the same spot, it'll probably be slightly different here and there where I've got our full false floor in for a portion of the video. We've got the rubber mat for a bit of it but it's generally running through all the little storage things you can do to improve the usefulness of these utes for day-to-day -day living as well as touring and stuff like that. Now, I'm not gonna go into drawer systems and all that sort of thing. It's, it's a real cheap budget, organizational sort of bits and pieces you can do to make life a lot easier, particularly if you're using the ute like we are as an everyday driver through the week. We'll do a little bit of exploring, camping, all sorts of stuff on the weekend, including little jobs around the house and also the touring we do with our camp trailer and caravan. So it needs to be fully adaptable. And in my case, I've got a lot of stuff I can pull off that you would have already seen through the series and put back on. For example, the King's tub rack, that's all off. And I've got my crossbars and my cheap marketplace platform back on because that for us is the the day-to-day the -day setup that we like to use and it works extremely well. So let's get into it and run through a few things to consider, a few tips and tricks, stuff I've learned along the way that will help you out as well, and all the other little bits and bobs that go into something like this. But remember, this is just keeping it very, very simple. We're not spending thousands of dollars here. It's just a little budget stuff you can do. And remember, it doesn't all have to be new. For example, this platform I picked up off Marketplace for $50. So that's a really good bargain. So hunt around on Marketplace if you don't wanna spend a lot of money because some of this stuff can get really, really expensive. Anyway, enough of the chit chat, let's get into it. So firstly, let's just undo all this and we'll start with the basics, which are cross rails, both down the below and up the top and all the other options you have around that in regards to tub racks, platforms, backbones and all that sort of gear to get you up to speed with that and some of the do's and don'ts particularly with the style side utes that have the rails the roller shutters and all that sort of thing in regards to load ratings now i covered a little bit of that off in the king's video we've actually got a triple m tub support under here which i'll show you through the video and that increases the rating so that we can put a few heavier items up on the roller shutter itself but I'll strip all this off now and we'll get into these cross rails and how they came about. So you'll see here, I've actually got two sets of racks. The first, which is what I was really after, that sit over and bridge the tub. I think that's a really good thing because once you've got the roller shutter over, you can't actually put anything on top of that roller shutter. And that gives us a multi-level storage opportunity, which is pretty handy. On top, you'll notice I've also got some crossbars. Now I picked them up secondhand and they just happen to work pretty well and give us a little bit of extra storage solution there if we're carrying some long lengths. So you've got a number of options with crossbars that go into the back of most dual cab utes. And in particular, when you come to the wild tracks and the premium models that have these bars and stuff like that, then you have multiple options. 
The first is obviously to clamp some crossbars onto these rails that sit on either side of the ute. Now on the Ranger, the low capacity of these is really low. I think it's around about 35 kilos. So once you put some crossbars and pretty much anything on them, you're gonna be over that load rating. So the other option is obviously, if you've got a roller shutter, you've got tracks that run down the inside of the roller shutter that they make to fit accessories on. Now these roller shutters that are fitted to all the wild tracks in particular, they're made by Mountain Top. So I actually ended up going down the route of fitting some Mountain Top crossbars because they are a bit more of a factory look. In fact, these are the factory crossbars you can get from Ford to go onto a range of wild track as well. So for me, that worked a little bit better. And the key here is that the load rating of this channel here is actually higher. I think it's around 75 kilos. And then you can also get braces that fit in underneath and that ups it a lot more, up to around 300 kilos from memory. Now I was actually looking at the Rhino removable bars that actually have a little section that gets bolted in and then you can unlock them and clip them off. The issue is, is the key lock actually fouls with these side rails a little bit. A lot of people got them to work, but at the end of the day, you still end up with the little staunchions that sit in here that the crossbars then lock onto. So I ended up going down this route, but the theory is pretty much the same. And so if you remove the lockable cap off, you've got two 10 mil bolts in here that secure the cross rails on either side. You loosen them off and you can slide them down. And you actually slide these up and down the shutter to get the spacing that you need for whatever you're carrying. But the key here is that you can actually slide these all the way under the sail plane at the end so that they sit back behind the roller shutter. So you've got this big clear area here to put some taller things in if you need to and this bar isn't fouling your access in and out. And just like that, you can slide them down the tracks in the roller shutter. You only have to get them just past the roller shutter when it's in the full open position, lock them back down, put the caps back on, and you're ready to roll. This actually probably makes it nice and flexible. You can actually put some max tracks or recovery boards on there if you wanted to, just to make a dual use of these crossbars if you don't need them all the way out. And that might be where a lot of people store them like that as well. The only compromise is you need to pull those caps off, loosen the bolts and move them around. But you're gonna to have to do that with everything, even if you've got clamp on crossbars. But remember, you've got a much better load rating on the roller shutter itself. And it's another thing that swayed me towards this style that slides in under the sail plane, as opposed to something that was external or even the crossbars that sat out. You can get the Rhino crossbars, which are around about 1400, but they, they sit out here and you can't get them past the sail plane if you've got one of those. If you just got a normal tray without the sail plane on it, that's not a drama. But for me, I just wanted to be able to tuck them in behind. So I've got this big free area in the back of the tray if we're carrying anything tall. Now, the good thing here is it's nice and easy to reach up and put things like our kids' kayaks on. And I've also gone and bought secondhand this mesh platform, which is 1500 by 1200. And it simply bolts onto the cross rails. And as you can see, this cheap $50 platform works extremely well. I can put a little bit of extra storage up here. This is our June 95 litre storage box, which I'll get onto shortly. I've got my swag on the other side. You can tie it all down and keep it all nice and tidy. And you've got a lot of extra room underneath for other bits and bobs. So it makes it a multi-use sort of setup. And I probably won't leave it on the ute. It's just for when we need to actually use it because it's very easy to take on and off. And I, again, I can just store it off to the side. So ultimately, I'd like to have an aluminium platform up here. And a future project I've been thinking about is how good would it be to have a lightweight aluminium platform that actually hinges with gas struts up. Now, I've seen a few people that have had a crack at that. And I think that would be a really good thing, whether or not it goes this way or that way. I think that would be really handy because when you get to your campsite, you can pull all the stuff off, you can lift it up, basically like what you would do to the top of a soft floor camper trailer, and you can access everything in between. I'd actually hinge it this way, so it goes up on that side because we've got our fridge and everything on this side. It's accessible from here, and I find when we're out camping or anywhere really, I'm usually accessing everything on the right hand side. So I'm really enjoying the concept of having this upper rack that sits down nice and low. Another option that we've done on our recent trip up to Brisbane and back is I got a waterproof bag and we've got all our stand up paddle boards, oars and all our swimming gear stored in this to provide a little bit of extra space down under the tub. And that's just another area where these racks actually work extremely well. And so really this is just a simplified version of a tub rack. 
Now, if you wanted to go a tub rack, there's a lot of different versions out there. Front runner have a really good one that actually goes into the same slides of the roller shutter. And then you have all your other brands, including Rhino, Yakima, so on and so forth, that have the modular racks that go in using their roof platforms and legs that come down to the tub itself. Now, if you wanted a purpose-built tub rack, you've got Triple M that actually made the same supports that we use under our roller shutter here that I showed in the King's tub rack video. They fabricate tub racks for specific style ute. So it's not a generic adjustable style tub rack you actually get a purpose-built one, just like bespoke 4x4 down in Victoria, that fits onto the actual shape and style of the ute that you're fitting it onto. So that's another really good option there. I guess the advantage there is that you get varying heights. So you can go 150 mil and 300 mil. So you've got more access down into the tub itself once that tub rack is permanently fixed into place. Here, I've got a bit of a hybrid solution where it sits quite low. So I am restricted in how I can reach down under this platform when it's in place. Now, ideally, I would go an aluminium one because they're much easier to take off with one person. This steel one's quite heavy and it's a little bit cumbersome to do it with one person. Can be done, but it's a lot easier with two. And then obviously you need to consider that you need to store all these things if you're pulling it all down, like we typically do. So we're just running the crossbars. But if you're the kind of person that will constantly use a tub rack, I would probably buy a purpose-built one that is suited to your particular ute. Whether or not you go a front runner style, which I do really love, they're extremely expensive though. A Rhino version, which sort of sits in between. There's a number of eBay ones, which use a generic aluminium platform and then legs that come down. However, most of them are made to suit a standard steel tub without the roller shutters. So you need to do a little bit of modifying there, similar to what we did with the King's tub rack that we documented a few episodes ago. That way it's a little bit more usable and you've still got access down into the tub. I'm still 50-50 on what we do here. So I'm just trying out different things and that's where these series of videos are probably going to help everyone that's in the same boat. You see what works for you, what works for us, trying to work out the best way of doing things. But that should give you a bit of a summary and things to look out for, particularly with the roller shutters and where you've got these bars because while they look like a really good area to mount things on, they don't have the load capacity. And even though the roller shutters themselves don't have a lot, you can get the bespoke or triple M roller shutter supports that up that rating quite significantly to around the 300 kilo mark. Then it's perfect to put a tub rack on, a rooftop tent and everything you might do to accessorize the rear portion of a style side ute. And now before I go through a few storage options, I'll just quickly touch on those roof racks and the awning, just in case anyone's interested. Now, obviously, again, the theme with this ute is to keep it simple and workable. But obviously, if you're going to use your roof quite a lot to store all sorts of bits and bobs, rather than actually tying stuff down, such as boards, bits of timber, or something like that, you might want to go a platform. Now, platforms get quite expensive. You're looking at $1,000 Plus, if you go full Pioneer aluminium platform with a backbone that runs down the side, but given we've actually got the rails, we could actually get the clamps that clamp onto that rail. And again, as we've got with the tub, the backbone will provide a better load capacity than simply clamping onto the rails that are factory fitted to a lot of these utes and premium vehicles. If you are going a platform style rack, Make sure you get the wind deflectors because that will make a really big difference. Now, I'll just quickly touch on these crossbars if anyone's interested to go onto the standard rails of the wild track. And these are just Rhino Vortex bars that are 1260 millimeters long. They've got their SX feet. However, I believe Rhino these days do recommend you use the RX feet. They're a little bit more heavy duty, but for what we're going to use it for, it's perfectly fine. I have actually fitted an awning onto it and that's just an Anaconda June awning, which I got on special for $67. So I picked these up secondhand. They're pretty much brand new. And while I was out picking them up, I saw that special. So I grabbed the awning. It's fixed on using our Rhino bracket system. I've always had my awning so they, the brackets fold down in the L instead of folding up. But I didn't want to uh, cut or foul onto these caps that go onto the side. The advantage of it sitting up like this is it's a lot easier to clean underneath the awning and get to the top of the, the pillars and stuff like that. 
when it's facing down, you don't have all that much clearance to get in and clean. So that's a lot better. The problem is that obviously decreases your clearance a little bit, so you just need to be careful. Now you could go down the other path of putting a full platform on here. I don't really have the need for that to spend the money on it. So for now, this will do us perfectly fine. The one thing I will note with Ford, and I'm extremely disappointed, it's probably my biggest gripe with the Ranger, is that this roof is not insulated at all. So you get a lot of wind noise from these crossbars and I believe any roof rack you put on, and it severely affects the phone. So if you're using Bluetooth inside, it is terrible once you get up above 80 kilometers an hour. I am contemplating flipping this awning down to see if that solves some of the wind noise issue that we have, even though the Vortex bars do have those deflector sort of wavy uh, rubber infills that you put in, we do get a lot of noise from those crossbars and the awning itself. And that's my gripe. I think the best solution would be to drop the headliner, fully insulate the roof turret, put it all back up, but it's, a, it's it's weighing up, breaking clips and all that sort of thing. It might be a video I do down the track because that might interest it, some people, but I think for now, we're just gonna deal with what we've got. But for example, Rhino have just released their Series 6 Pioneer Rack, which is supposed to be a lot more aerodynamic and have a lot less wind noise. So there's a lot of new products coming out in the market that you might wanna look at. But again, as I just said, do your research, see what works for the vast majority of people and probably go down that route. It's also probably worthwhile talking to a number of roof rack suppliers in your local area because they'll have really good knowledge even though they will be married to certain brands, but they should be able to give you a fair bit of advice on meeting your certain needs and requirements in regards to loads, mounting, and what you need to put on top. That also comes down to all the accessories that go with them for example, if you've got kayaks you're constantly putting on, I'd buy the kayak mounts and supports that go onto a crossbar rather than necessarily putting them onto a flat rack. If you are carrying around a lot of boxes and spares and little loose bits and pieces, then obviously a flat style rack will be a lot better for you because you can actually secure and tie it down onto the platform itself. So that's just a little bit of food for thought. There's a few little storage options that you mightn't be aware of that work extremely well, particularly in the back of the next gen wild tracks. The first is this June storage locker that you get from Anaconda. It fits perfectly down under the roller shutter drum and you can use this for pretty much anything. I would probably actually fit this out with all our recovery gear. So again, you can take it in and out. It's got a full weather seal on it. It's got a drain plug at the other end. So if water does get in it or you want to need to clean it out, you can clean it out really easily. These clamps are really good. And again, as I said, you can lock them up. It's got carry handles on both sides and it's really tough, robust plastic. You often get these on special from Anaconda. So don't pay full price. Wait till they're on special and pick them up. Now the beauty of having this box up here is the little side step that the rangers have. You can reach up easily, grab what you need, get back down, and you don't need to take it down off the tub itself. So I need to work out a simple solution of bolting this down. It might actually be fixing it through the mesh, similar to how the mesh actually fits onto the cross rails, but I'll come up with a solution there, and I know some people have. There are little tie downs you can use in here so that you can open and close this lid with a steel strap down and secured onto the rack itself. So it's actually a really nice fit. It fits perfectly widthwise and it slots in underneath the drum of the roller shutter itself. So that's a really good solution. The only thing is you do need to pull it out a little bit to open and close it. But as I said, most of the time, I'm probably gonna sit it up here. So we've got a little bit of weatherproof storage up on top here when we're traveling and it solves a number of storage issues, particularly if you're going from a wagon like us to a dual cab ute and you wanna keep things organized a little bit without putting full drawers in the back. Now, the next thing we've started using is this Tactics. It's a stackable open style tub. I actually bought a few of these for my van, but they didn't really work the way I wanted. So I had them lying around, but the beauty of this is it just slots into place behind the tail light and the wheel wheel area. It's, it's almost a perfect fit into this little nook here. Normally we've got our rubber liner down in here, so it doesn't move around, but you can also tie it in. And it just keeps things a little bit more organized. So we've at the moment got our picnic set in here. We've got a rug, sunscreen, some little uh, portable stools, just in case we need them when we're out and about and we haven't got any chairs with us. Other knickknacks and stuff like that, you would normally have in the boot or the back of your wagon or something like that. So again, for us, it's just trying to keep things a little bit more organized. 
you can chuck your school bags and your shopping and everything in here and it's it's making it work a little bit better you can also put another one of these on the other side but then it sort of hampers your button for the roller shutter and your 12 volt access and stuff like that so for now i'm just using this you can easily just pull this out when you don't need it stash it away you can even have two one set up like this one empty that you might put your shopping in or something like that it's just about having some multiple uses of different storage things to get the back of these utes working really really well but we have more we've now returned from our trip from brisbane over christmas and i've been using these collapsible crates that were also suggested in one of the next gen ranger groups they're really really handy so let me show you what they're all about these are a really good storage option as well as the side case that we normally have in here and because they're a modular sort of fit they fit perfectly two side by side in between the wheel arches so let me pull this out and show you what it's all about as well so this is a tactics collapsible crate it's a larger size it's 43 liters that you get from bunnings it's a real heavy robust plastic and it folds down nice and neat like this so you can actually store it down on the side without too many dramas at all and it keeps the back of the tub fairly usable now the good thing about this is that it simply folds up you click the ends into place like so and you can store everything inside so it's not rolling around in the back of the u-tub itself so you can put everything in here plonk these into the back of the tray and it helps keep everything organized and from rolling around inside the volume that you've got in here now obviously the rubber mat that we just had in here works extremely well with these as does the false floor that we've now got in here because we've just returned from our trip to brisbane this false floor i documented in the original video that all of this was supposed to be a part of so if you're interested in that head over and watch that video as well but these actually work extremely well because of their dimensions they're 600 long remember that and 400 wide and around about 225 mil high but it's actually the length that makes them work extremely well particularly in the next gen ranges because as we discovered with this false floor the distance between the wheel tubs is around about 1200 mil which means you can easily put two of these in like so and they fit really neatly in the opening of the tailgate itself and even further back in between the wheel tubs so that is a really, really good, easy to do setup for storing things away. They pack down all nice and neat. If you buy something, you're out and about and you need to squeeze some other gear in there, you can easily do that as well. And you're not stuck with the actual volume of these that you've got to either throw on the back seat. If you've got kids, that's never going to happen or try to tuck away if you've got something bulky you need to put in there. They simply collapse down, they're out of the way and it keeps everything all nice and simple. So I do think these work really well. Now I actually got these to put all the Christmas presents in so we could just stack all the different varied size Christmas presents in, slide these in and create a bit of a Tetris puzzle in the back of the ute. But what Michelle discovered the other day when she did the shopping when we got back is that all the Coles, Woolworths bags, all those uh, reusable bags that you get these days fit really neatly in here. So you can organize all your shopping, plonk it in and you don't have to worry about it ending up down the front of the tray when you're coming home. You can actually take these out, bring them in, put them on the kitchen floor, up on the bench or whatever, unpack all your shopping and then either pack these down or just stash them back in the back of the ute. Because in our case, these will work extremely well for putting all our school bags and stuff in as well, during all the daily duties that this ute has to do as well. So I just thought these would be good to throw into the video because these have actually been really, really handy. Even though Michelle was a little bit skeptical on how good they would be, we've actually been using them quite a lot, particularly over the school holidays and on our little trip up to Brisbane. And I'm sure once we get back into the daily grind, they'll be just as useful, particularly in regards to all your shopping bags and stuff like that. It's one thing you need to deal with now. You haven't got a boot area, back of a wagon or anything like that in that if stuff ends up down the front, you've got to crawl in and pull it all back out. Particularly if you've got this on, I'm about to do a tip run. So all of this is coming off now that I've finished off the video. So we'll wind it up there. There's a lot of other things you can look into in regards to drawer systems and all that sort of gear. Remember we had the original video, which had the fridge slide, this false floor and everything else as well. So there's a whole series of videos that go into building up something like this, even though it's still really, really simple, cost effective and basic. And most importantly, it's all modular and adaptable. So we can swap things in and out as our different needs and uses of this ute vary through the week, into the weekends, 
when we're traveling away and all that sort of gear. If you're interested in that form ply divider, which I do actually have a few thoughts on how I might do that as a little project, put a few comments down below. Any, any other tips and tricks you've got for people that might be looking at storage tips and tricks, all your roof racks, rails, platforms and stuff like that, just to help everyone out in the community that's doing their research and trying to work out what might be suitable for their particular use as well. So anyway, I've got to get going and I thank everyone for watching this Ranger series. For all my loyal viewers before we got the Ranger, I said this wasn't going to be a full build and it's not. This is just little bits and pieces I've come up with. We're getting back into our regularly scheduled content very, very shortly because we've got a big project coming in 2024 and that is a gnarly little camper trailer. I've got to order a few bits and pieces, but we've got a few major components for it, such as that King's tub rack, the rooftop tent, and everything that was sitting on this Ranger just a few months ago. So there's a lot of little things happening in the background, but I think 2024 is gonna be a really big year. Come along for the ride. I thank you all for watching. And as I always say, get out there, stay safe, have fun, and we'll catch you next time.